In the middle of the night, I was awakened by the sound of horses' hoofs on the pavement. I said to myself, student pranks all Paul Revere, and was turning to go to sleep when I became aware that my sitting room, whose door was open, seemed mysteriously light. I rose to investigate. At that moment came a voice from the third floor. The university is burning! My first thought was of Hoover Cottage, whose matron was out of town. I dressed immediately and went up through the town, ruddily lighted. Aware, as I came up Bell Avenue, that it was not Hoover that was burning. At University Street, the splendor of it all burst upon me. Five stories of seasoned walnut wainscoting and huge open stairways encased with a light shell of brick. One huge flame. It was an absolutely quiet night with a light snow on the ground. The white library, just a year old, and the still unfinished chapel were silhouetted against the huge flaming hall. Fire engines availed nothing. Something elemental had gone beyond man's control. Therefore, we watched it. Silent. Odd. At four o'clock in the morning, we faculty members went somehow to a faculty meeting. We met in the queerest of garbs, frightened, smoke blackened, wondering. Imagine our amazement to be confronted by a plan from Dr. Compton as to how we could carry on beginning that day. We were operating on the term plan and examination week was pending. Then and there, a schedule was worked out for exams to be held in the library basement, the new chapel basement, the old gym. At 10 o'clock, the students assembled with us in the old gym, heard the plan, accepted it, agreed to rally to the scheme to rebuild the college. That was the birth of a new student morale at Worcester. Out of the blackened ruins in the face of such will to live, there rose, phoenix-like, the spirit of Worcester.